the Gunners Day was just celebrated. Artillery has been a battle winning war in the past and it continues to be so now. Without going too far back in history, Kargil War brought out the compelling lesson of overwhelming importance of artillery as an indispensable arm of decision. The same lessons continues to be drawn out day in and day out from the long-running Russia-Ukraine conflict. Gunner's history is replete with acts of bravery and devotion to duty. Over the years, artillery has time and again proved to be a battle-winning factor on the battlefield. In the recent past, during Operation Vijay in 1999, that is, during the Kargil conflict, the entire nation witnessed a unique saga of employment of massed firepower of a magnitude never seen before, resulting in the destruction of the enemy's combat potential and the will to fight. 20th September holds special significance for the Regiment of Artillery as on this day in the year 1827, the first Indian artillery unit, that is a five mountain battery, was raised. The date is celebrated by the Regiment of Artillery as the Gunner's Day. Since its raising, the Regiment of Artillery has grown manifold and transformed into a formidable force. Today, as the Regiment of the Artillery is gearing up to face future challenges, it draws inspiration from past operational achievements. Indian Artillery is today witnessing an unprecedented transformation wherein the Regiment is graduating from manual to automatic, analog to digital and conventional to smart. Recent conflicts around the world, including the Russia-Ukraine war, have banished the myth about the primacy of firepower as a battle-winning factor. The Regiment of Artillery says it has learned a number of lessons from the ongoing conflict and these are being plotted in the capability development plans and artillery doctrines. It says the capability development arena, which is based on the principle of modernization through indigenization, is progressing well as per timelines. 155mm will be the standard caliber of all artillery guns. I would take the claim of sticking to the timelines with a pinch of salt because timelines have kept changing over the years. In 1999, India had finalized the Field Artillery Rationalization Program. It was to become the backbone of India's fire assault in future wars, especially in the mountains. Under the FARP, the army is supposed to have by 2025-27, remember we're in 2023, a mix of around 3000 to 3600 155mm but different caliber types of towed, mounted, self-propelled that is tracked and wheeled howitzers. This was to be achieved through a mix of direct imports, licensed manufacturing and indigenous systems. After years of being in the rut, the artillery program got a push post-2015 with successful completion of trials, which had begun around 2012, signing of contracts and various systems entering the last stages of decision-making. The artillery program was then seen as a success story by everyone in the defense establishment and outside. It was in 2016 that the army was finally able to break the Bofors jinx, as I reported then, and in the first agreement for artillery guns after the Bofors scandal came out in the 1980s. India had placed an order with the US in what was nearly a 5,000 crore deal for 145 M777 ultra light howitzers which have been deployed near the LAC. All of these guns have now been deployed. This was the first artillery deal in three decades and signaled the beginning of the realization of a long delayed artillery modernization program. Then in 2017, private player Larsen and Turbo, that is LNT, won the contract to supply 100 K9 Vajra the 155mm 52 caliber tracked self propelled gun systems. In 2018, an order was placed for 114 of the 155mm into 45mm Dhanush guns, a product of the gun carriage factory in Madhya Pradesh's Jabalpur, which comes under the erstwhile state run Ordnance Factory Board. There was also a deal for Project Sharang with the OFB for the upgunning of the 130mm M46 artillery guns to 155mm. Amid all this, a deal for a 
stored artillery gun system under the buy and make category was also on. This proposal had been in works for nearly two decades. And then there was also the advanced stored artillery gun system. That is the attacks being developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization DRGO along with private firms Bharat Forge of the Kalyani Group and the Tata Par SED. Among all the projects mentioned above, the only two completed ones are the Vajra and the M777. The OFB has actually delivered an abysmally low number of Dhanush guns out of the 114 ordered in 2018 to which the army has flagged key production quality concerns as reported by the print earlier. As far as the Sharan guns are concerned, the pace is still very slow. And this is what the army should focus on. But it's not the indigenous Dhanush or the advanced stored artillery gun that is the attacks, but the new 155mm 52 caliber towed gun system that the TGS that's earmarked to be the mainstay gun of the artillery in the future. While a request for proposal for 307 attacks had been sent to the Indian firms Kalyani Group and Tata, both of which have developed the weapon, what the army is actually looking at is a much lighter and more agile TGS, which has more automation than the attacks. This will be through the IDDM category. Now, IDDM category means indigenously designed, developed and manufactured with a minimum of 50% indigenous content, that is the IC, on cost basis of the total contract value. This could go up to 60%. And this is where it gets interesting. The new tender will see multiple companies getting into the play, including foreign companies like Elbit and Nexter from France besides others. Why I said IDDM is interesting is because this brings both these companies back in the fray. The process for acquiring towed guns began in 2001 as part of the Army's field artillery rationalization plan. Multiple requests for proposals, that is the RFPs, were issued. In the last RFP, which was issued under the UPA government, only two companies mentioned above participated. In March 2019, following what was meant to be an exhaustive field trial come evaluation process spread over several years, which saw several ups and downs, Elbit Systems was declared the lowest bidder, that is the L1. The deal was for the supply of 400 guns and indigenous production of the remainder 1,180 guns by the erstwhile OFB under a full transfer of technology process. Now, sources in the defense establishment said that the price of Elbit Systems Athos was lower by 40% compared to the price of its competitor, that is the Nexter's Trajan gun. Sources in the know of the bidding process said that the cost per gun, which weighs less than 15 tons and has a fully automatic loading system put forward by the Elbit, was less than rupees 11 crore per piece. This is also significantly lower than the estimated cost of the attacks. Since the bid opened in March 2019 and the completion of the cost negotiation process in July that year, a final decision was pending. Finally, the army decided to go through the IDDM way. In December 2020, the Israeli government also wrote a letter to the Defense Minister Rajnath Singh to push for this deal. However, the Defense Research and Development Organization, the DRDO, has gone on record to oppose any import plans, saying its attacks was better than Athos and is the gun of the future. However, the army disagrees. Last year, the Israeli firm also wrote to the Indian Defense Authority stating that in case they prefer to acquire only the first 400 towed guns, the related cost corresponding to TOT can be deducted from the total contract price. This was due to a line of thinking in the defense establishment that 400 of these guns for about 20 regiments can be procured from Elbit to, and I quote, overcome operational voids in the medium artillery in HAA, that is high altitude area along the northern borders. However, sources say the figures in the RFP cannot be changed in the middle of the process. In the letter, Elbit Systems has offered the full TOT for the future 1,180 guns as an option for India at the same cost as mentioned in the commercial offer made. Elbit also said it has finalized the approach and strategy to achieve 70% indigenization within the contract of the first 400 towed guns, starting from the first guns itself. 
This means that if the company lives up to its promise, it actually meets more than the IDDM requirement of the indigenization. The company's argument was that the ethos is tailored to the special requirements of the Indian Army and it has invested tens of millions of dollars in design and development of the gun in accordance with the Army requirements and in the field trials. The sources said that Elbit also promised to supply the guns much earlier than the contract delivery schedule. The first six guns within 10 months from contract signing and additional six guns within 14 months. According to the Israeli firm, all the remaining guns will be delivered according to an accelerated delivery schedule which will ensure finalization of the deliveries not later than 54 months from the contract signing instead of the 72 months stipulated in the draft contract. In his communication with the Indian Defense Establishment, Elbit said, Athos will end up being an indigenous gun, mass-produced, assembled and integrated in India. And that is why I said this new project that the army is pursuing under the IDDM category is an interesting one. And of course, last but not the least, do subscribe to the print. Now I'll tell you why it's important to subscribe. It's because of people like you who subscribe to the print that I, along with my colleagues, are able to travel across the country and around the world to get you the news that matter. So yes, if you think that we are doing a good job, if you think that we should keep going ahead with the kind of stories that we do, do subscribe to the print. The screen will show you the steps that you should take. And of course, there is a subscription link that is there in the description. So go ahead, subscribe to the print.